Yes, that's a moon. Yes. <laughs> Can I just... Is it going to go? Can we just let it go? Is it tedium? It's got a red light, so you might need to push up somewhere. Um, that's a red light. Jeremy. Lulu, come back. Then she's going to be naughty. I take it Lulu doesn't normally come to school. Nope. No, no, no. First time. Uh, and you don't have a run off there? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> about 4.8 million dogs, pet dogs. And 33.5% of them are overweight and 7.6% of them are obese. And that's a total of 41% of dogs that are overweight or obese. Doggy Delight is the right product for your owners who struggle to have the time to buy their precious pooch dog treats or if you're looking for a healthier option. Not only are our de delicious products used for subscriptions, they are also healthy treats full of vitamins and fibre. It has been recorded that 24 million people in Australia find at least one dog. And as Courtney said earlier, 41% of owners believe that their dog is overweight. When we first started, we knew that there was a problem with the ingredients in the food. So we did a few surveys and asked a few people to see what their opinions were on the food. And the majority all seemed to agree that their dog food wasn't the healthiest for their dog. Even the people who didn't seem to have a problem with their dog food they um, still had a problem with the pricing, so we took both of them and we made our business doggy delight. Yeah. 
We do doggy delight treats for owners who live on the Sunshine Coast by making it cheaper and healthier for their dogs. We have created a website for owners which is more time efficient for them than running to the shops. We can show you our website at the end. We do have some competitions such as Zoe Doggy Treats, Frankie Loves Bakery and Heidi Doggy Treats that do some handmade online dog treat stores. Some of our competitors focus on problems such as pricing, health ratings and location. While all of our competitors are Australian based, none of the stores are based within Queensland and that is where our company is different. We plan to be a company that, can, that has cheap pricing, good health ratings, while being locally based. We don't add any nasty chemicals and preservatives. Our treats are freshly baked and shipped within that day. We're all about helping our owners and their dogs by making their food healthier. We want to make it easier for them as well so that they can have the online store and they can just um, see what treats are on offer and then like what the ingredients are. Um, we've made them healthier and so that when the owners give them to the dogs they know that they're healthier and they know that the dogs will enjoy them. Um, in the box we have um, peanut butter, coconut oil treats, healthy pumpkin treats and the basic, just the basic dog biscuit and the oat bacon. And on the front here yeah, they have the ingredients. And they will be vacuum sealed, this is just a... Um, okay. And they, will they will be, yeah. So that's just to show. Yeah. We have little ones, big ones, and different shapes. Yeah. And we do have Lulu here to try one if you want to see her, try them, enjoy them. Absolutely. Okay, awesome thing. Okay, Lulu. Lulu. is if she picks up all the crumbs as well. <laughs> oh, she seems to be enjoying that. That's the peanut butter coconut oil mm -hmm. dog treat. So Courtney and I are somewhat different in what we can do. Me and me, I am more of a practical hands-on person and Courtney is more of an artistic person who likes to create things. We work great together because we are so passionate about the business and are prepared to go all the way and do whatever it takes. We also are passionate about dogs and we want to make a difference if we can. Um, our overall vision is to have a large online store that people can never worry about running out of dog treats or dog food for their dogs. Um, we also want to add a few toys to make the box a little bit more fun and so it's not just treats, it's dog toys as well. Um, we also want a bit more variety of the dog treats and possibly to sell it all over Australia. Um, but our uh, UVP is to cut out all the preservatives and like nasty chemicals and all that. What we are hoping to achieve out of today is some money so we can upgrade our website to go premium so then we can start taking orders through our website. We would also hope for some money to buy our own vacuum seal so we can get the packeting vacuumed. We, also like, we would also like your publicity to help our web website get out there. We believe that with your help, we can make our business great and help all the owners who struggle with overweight or obese dogs, and even the owners who struggle with the pricing of the treats. And we just want to finish off with a final statement that if you wouldn't put it in your mouth, why put it in your dog's mouth? What we mean by that is if you don't want to, you wouldn't want to eat the chemicals or the preservatives, then why would you want your dog to eat it? We want your dog to have a healthier food option. Thank you. Very good. Well done.
So yeah, this is our website, and you can. We've just kind of made it so like you can log in and you can like keep records of what you've bought and like tracking. Mm -hmm. Scroll down. There's like a few pictures about us, um, our services, like the shipping that we're going to include, and like the customer service. And if you scroll down a little bit more, there's like the products that we have and the different like the different ones. Mm -hmm. And then you can also yeah contact us. But if you scroll up and you press quick view, you can. You can purchase it on how many you want, you yeah. add to cart. And yeah, you go like that. And then there it is. And if you want to, this is where we need your like your help and like the money is because when you want to check out, so we don't have to do a separate, like a separate um, payment, option. payment option. So you can just pay online so it's easy for the customers as well. But yeah, so if you press check out, then it needs that upgrade. So are you up and running now, or is this yes. just a project? Yes, and yes, we've had our first sale with two bags of treats. Yeah. What was that? Oh, a sale two bags. Was that a random person, or was it somebody that you knew? Somebody, somebody you knew. knew. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could you go back to your customer service bit and just yeah. talk about that a little bit? What you mean by what's your customer service going to be like? Um, so... We want like all our customers to experience an impressive level of professionalism when buying dog from Doggy Delight. All our services, especially especially this one, exist to make your life easier and stress free. So you can trust us to supply with the best products as well as the top quality customer service. We are also like planning to do a subscription. So you when you go into checkout, you can set it for that checkout to come out every however often you would like it. So then you don't have to worry about going onto the website all over again. If like ordering or something, yeah. What is the shelf life of the treats? Um, so like without the vacuum seal, they last about three weeks. With the vacuum seal, they last about six to seven weeks. Yeah. And there was five or 10? Oh, uh, five, uh, 10 in a pack, sorry. 10 in a pack, 10 in a pack yeah. is $5. Yeah. yeah. The, but your postage outweighs your, was your postage $8.30? Yeah, so we were, we were thinking about changing that and making the biscuits cost more, shipping less sort of thing. Okay, yeah. how would you, because your price of five bucks is very reasonable mm -hmm. compared to off the shelf mm -hmm. um, and also compared to um, handmade. You yeah. often see handmade dog treats in shops and they're, you know, they can range from Dollar fifty to two dollars fifty each, yeah. depending. So, <clears throat> uh, how how are you going to make like how have you priced it at five bucks? I mean, well, we've done like so the cost of the ingredients, and we've like separated that to a batch of like how much it costs. Then that was like three dollars twenty five for a different batch, but um, then for one biscuit, it's like like. Two cents, I think it was. Yeah. So then we've just done ten, and then we've added a bit of profit on that as well. Okay. So, so yeah. what is your profit margin? Profit is like three dollars. Well, it depends on the biscuit because like the ingredients cost like different, obviously. But mostly it's like three to four dollars on yeah. a packet. Yeah. And later within our future, we are hoping like when we get our business up and running, we're hoping to start donating money to like an animal shelter or something. Yep. Yep. So okay. getting that's good to have that stuff. social enterprise. Yeah. Um, feel good factor for people so they know that when they're buying your products they're also helping yeah. um, you know animals with the you know in a situation yeah. that they'd rather not be yeah. um, have you taken into when you've priced your products have you taken into consideration everything like wages uh, no not at the moment but we will yeah you'll like need to do that wages, yeah. Yeah. You, you need to do that from the get go mm -hmm. so that you know that the price because you you know, because otherwise you yeah. charge five bucks now or six bucks or whatever, and then start to factor in wages, you yeah. might find your product price is just too high, yeah. or you might find that at five bucks you can't afford to do it because you just have to do it for the love yeah. of it and not to make money. And the idea of business is to make money. Yeah. So, how long does it take you to make a batch, and how many biscuits are in a batch? Oh, so it takes. Well, to cook them, it takes 25 minutes, but so it's probably like uh, 15 minutes prep, so it's like 40, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. Um, and there's about 
30 in one batch and then like in a different batch it's like 50. It just depends on the biscuit. Yeah. Okay. So you need to work out an hourly rate that you would charge your cells out at. On, on a sensible hourly yeah. rate, not two bucks an hour or something. <laughs> yeah. Something realistic and then factor that in as well. The time it takes you to go and get those products. Yep. Obviously once you get your business up to you know, being more commercial, you'll buy those products in bulk. Um, you might even have them delivered, who knows, yep. but um, you, you need to really think about that in your business model, how, how everything is going to be paid for, what that looks like, and then what you're left with at the end. Okay. And also, yep. what happens when you get 100 orders on the Tuesday, and people want and expect it to be mailed to them the following day, can you scale, like would you have enough oven space be able to make all those batches within the time frame that you're you're setting as a customer expectation. I think is would be interesting. Have you thought about that? Uh, no, not like that much. But yeah, we would need to. I but yeah. Because then you then when you get to that point, you will have to understand what size oven you might need to purchase. Yep. And then that will factor into your profit yep. calculations as well. And what sort of capital will you need to be able to grow the business? Bigger ovens often cost more money to run. Yeah. So. How big do you want the business to be? Well, we want to sell it. <coughs> well, our you, um, our overall vision is to sell it around Australia. So big, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a specific target market? Oh, well, just pretty much people who own dogs. Pretty much. That's, yeah. Anyone who owns a dog, because we can do smaller treats, bigger treats, but not size dogs. And how, how have you thought about reaching those potential customers? What sort of marketing are you going to use? Um, well, we're having, we could, if possible, you guys, but then also just um, social media, so like Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. All that, yeah. We now have an Instagram account up and running. And Facebook, yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, I push those as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Listening to a podcast this morning about social media and marketing, and the more you can use those, you should be posting every day. And it doesn't, you know, it can just be fantastic photos of dogs enjoying yeah. treats or fantastic pictures, but just dogs, yeah. you know, out on the beach or up the range or wherever it might be. Are you thinking of doing um, maybe doing some self promotion in markets, you know? And oh, yeah. Yeah, we were thinking about doing that as well. Yeah, just like also to get us out there. But yeah, and make sure when you do markets, um, whether they're you know sort of the bigger markets on the coast or whether they're just maybe some of the little um, the smaller markets, make sure that you have handouts that have all of your social media contacts yeah. on there, your website, those sorts mm -hmm. of things. When someone buys um, our products, they'll be shipped into the box, and we also have a little note inside saying thank you, and when we do get donating happening, it will say thank you for yeah, donating for this. Explain where it's going to be and donated. Have, like, yeah, all yeah. our social medias and stuff. Like yeah. that start making some money though before you start giving yeah. it away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's big, you know, just see, just, you, you've got, that's great you've had your first on, online sale. Was it an online oh, sale? No, it no. no, okay. Well, it's good that you've had your first sale. And now's the time you need to really test that market and see whether you have a business or not. Yep. Okay. Um, Paul, sorry, did you? Do you have any fixed costs? You talked about your costs before, and they were all basically variable costs. Do you have any fixed costs? Um, no. Like, well, it depends. Like, What's your website cost when you need to get that extra... Oh. Card payment. It'll be eighteen dollars a month. Okay. Yeah. And that's one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. So yeah. What we'll be getting is like all them within our yep. subscription. Yeah. And and have you checked that against other ways of building your website? Is that the cheapest way you can find? So far, that is yeah. one of the cheapest ones that yep. we could find. Yeah. yeah okay. It's basic subscriptions free, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Mm. But that's only for 30 days, that's just a trial. Mm. But 
then the the basic one is eight dollars. Yeah. Mm. But that excludes the um, the online payments. Yeah. yeah. So given your capability right now, you basically very little fixed cost, i.e. you don't have to rent a storefront or a yeah, yeah. What how big can you be and still keep your, your fixed costs to like using mom's other home? Yeah. Like how big can you you know? Um well I think we could get pretty big, but um just the payment but it's I don't know how to explain it, but um, like we do have a school kitchen yeah. downstairs where we can use. Okay. We have previously cooked our biscuits in there. Right. Yeah. So I presume if you get the vacuum sealer, mm -hmm. yeah. that's going to give a, a greater shelf life yeah. anyway to your products yeah. Yeah. because once they're essentially cryovacked, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. vacuum sealed. My suggestion would be that you really prove this up by doing local markets. Yeah, okay. Okay? Yeah. And you start creating a market here on the coast. Yeah. Don't think about anything further than that right now. Yeah. Okay? It's just like if nothing else, you can create yourselves a really nice little part-time job mm -hmm. selling your products, continuing school, and at the same time looking how you can scale it yeah. down the track. Okay. Um, and I think that you can do that exactly as you are at the moment, whether you use the school ovens, home ovens, mm -hmm. if you've got the vacuum sealer you can do a big batch of cooking at the weekend yeah. or, or here or whatever, mm -hmm. get a whole heap together ready to go and do the markets yeah. and, and start selling them at the markets and build some momentum and around your name, mm -hmm. around your branding and then just smash it out all over the socials. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The, the design of the treats, who's designing the treats and the nutrients in it? Do you have a dietitian that's doing that or how no, are you doing We don't that? have a dietitian. We just we've just like looked it up and seen like research whether like what is healthier and if it's too much if it's healthier. Yeah. And we've like based our knowledge onto what's good and what's not for our dogs that we have at home. And have changed that into a recipe that we might have liked. How many dogs have you trialed your treats on? Um, I've tried mine, three of my dogs, one of hers. Blue. Blue. I tried it on a friend's dog too. Yeah, so about six, five, six dogs. Yeah. I would think you need to go and trial a few of like yeah. yeah. a lot more just mm -hmm. to make sure that if, like, every dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's the base? In, is there a base ingredient? It, that it's in all of them. Um, the probably one. flour. Yeah. So they're still like a wheat-based product. Yeah. Okay. Well done, girls. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll probably add one more. One more channel for you to think about is yeah. all the vets around the area. They all sell little treats yeah. at their at their front counter. Yeah. Um, so you might. Go and talk to them yep, about yeah. getting your product up there as well. Oh yeah, good idea. Because okay. I think the way that you're setting up your model things, sort of, you know, online, you want to, you need to capture as many clients yeah. quickly yeah. who are going to continually spend with you, and then that way that cash is going to help you expand. Yeah. So yeah. the more clients you can catch and keep, mm -hmm. that's the name of the game. And plus, if you have you know, the vet, if it's there, it basically is giving you credibility. Yeah, and it's saying that. There's plenty of time for a website. A website that will do lots of marketing. Mm -hmm. Get your name out there, build your yep. brand, build some reputations. Paul yeah, yeah. and uh, Ryan have both said vets are going to give you a great credibility. Mm -hmm. okay. right. add, add energy. You need more energy into your yes. pitch. Yep. You've got all the knowledge about yep. your product. You add that with energy and emotion on the topic of dogs, people are going to love it. Because yeah, okay. all dog owners are yeah. pretty emotional about their dogs, aren't they? Yeah. So you've got to reflect their emotions. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I'm going to give you 15 DeLorean dollars. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you 20. Thank you. Then I'll give you 20. Thank you. Well done, girls. Great work. Thank you. Always the toughest place being yeah, first. Being yeah. first. <laughs> so you're trailblazers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And well done, Lulu. Good luck with that. <laughs> All right. Grab your cash, ladies. Thank you.
shipping containers are unused and sitting all over the globe. Each year more than 500,000 shipping containers are abandoned. So why don't we do something about this? Shipping containers are the future. These giant steel containers don't need to just be used for storage and shipment of materials. Instead, shipping containers can be used for practically anything, including houses, shops, cafes, pools, offices, schools, all for a very cheap price. Shipping containers interest us because they are unique and we have found out that shipping containers are cheaper to build than a traditional brick house and they are eco-friendly because they are made from recycled shipping containers. In fact, every time a shipping container is recycled, we are using more than 7,000 pounds of steel. They say reach for the sky, and I believe that is what we are doing. We are passionate about shipping containers and interested in how they are used in many different ways. After looking at many different ideas of what we could do with shipping containers, we decided we wanted to do something around education. Our idea is to make an outdoor classroom with shipping containers, suitable for nearly all the subjects, or an interactive education cubby house, also done with shipping containers. This project will be placed in our school, and we hope to potentially can lead to other schools in the area wanting their own. It would be beneficial for schools and small communities in the middle of Australia who don't have access to safe, usable classrooms. So our team, myself, Felicity and Marizel, are creating the, the spaceship. spaceship. We chose this name as it is a learning space for the future. We as a team have come a long way over this DeLorean roller coaster. From the start of the year, I have always been interested in shipping containers and how they are used for different designs. And I later found out that Marizal was into interior design, so we thought we would make a good duo. So, but we, we got lots of negative comments about our idea and we didn't think that it would be very easy to pursue. So we joined other teams and we made new ideas, but we just weren't passionate about those. So then we just decided to go with our original idea and see where it can take us. So we did some research on the benefits of outdoor learning spaces and found it improves children's health and well-being, social skills and behaviour. And furthermore, has been proven to encourage better attendance and teamwork. We spoke to many experienced people to ask for help on our idea and what they thought our school would like to have. When we first started DeLorean, we wanted to make a uni accommodation out of shipping containers, but soon found out that there are already too many accommodations and there's no space to have a new place for shipping containers. Once, one of the main points we received for what schools might want is an innovative education learning space. There are too many boring typical classrooms out there and we, that has been there for decades. So we realise our idea may not be very easy to make, but we will persist to make it and make sure we get in contact with the right people. With shipping containers, anything is possible. And our customers will be schools who are interested in having an innovative learning environment. After receiving final feedback with our idea, we set some goals we need to achieve before moving forward. We recently have been given permission from Mr Curtis, our school principal, for a shipping container to be placed on the school grounds. We have also been in contact with Mark Woodland, founder of Explore Child Care Education Program. He showed, us great, he showed great interest in our idea and has, been offered, has offered to provide us with the support on where to go from. We are also planning to take a trip to Bilatina to meet with the professional in the shipping container world. We will contact our um, potential investor to help collect the supplies in contact with the builders. Once we have settled everything, we plan to have the shipping container on our school grounds by October. Then work and refine it and have a finished product by the start of December. 
So we are really passionate and interested in this area and would love it to become a space for the future. We believe our school would benefit from this project and it could potentially bring more people coming through this school. We would love your feedback on our idea and would appreciate any contacts you have with builders, shipping container homeowners or makers. We would also love an investment so we can get our project up and running and buy supplies such as furniture. We are We're sick of boring old classrooms, so let's make a change. Well done, girls. I uh, love your presentation. Thank you. Um, shipping containers, very interesting. And you're absolutely right, they can be used for many things and are. Um, what's the difference, do you think? Uh, you tell me the difference between a shipping container being used as an outdoor classroom and putting on a, a demountable. Like? Demountable, as in you mean like a temporary, like a. Okay. Um, we found that shipping containers, you can easily like cut them up, and they can be put in different areas. So when we make our outdoor classroom, we're gonna um, we'll get builders to cut it up for us, and we'll have it shaped in different to make it interesting and more creative for the children. So when you say cut it up, what do you mean? Like, um, well, if there's a shipping container here, we're gonna um, cut it in half. Yes. To make little spaces that we can use for the learning space. Right, so it doesn't have to be one whole. No. No. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah. Okay, so these are very rough sketches, but for example, so you cut the container into three, yeah. and then these three cutouts would be curved. Like a little cubby house. Yes. Cubby. And can they be pushed back together? They can. They'll be, yeah whatever the school wants for their... Yeah. And for like grade one or two, so you have the three cutouts and they would be like, to make it fun, a bridge to the connect the other one, monkey yeah. bars the other one, slide coming out, yeah. or like, because your maintainers are all designable, you can have this side and it lifts up to become the roof. Yes. Or we had, this is another idea, we had the shipping container yeah. and the deck and sliding doors. Yeah. And yeah. And are these twenty foot shipping containers or forty foot? Um, we're twenty, 20, 20 foot. Yeah. Just to start. Yeah, to what do they cost to get? Um, Just the container. Around anywhere to two thousand to three thousand. Or does that include transporting to the location? Mm, no. no. <laughs> what what might that cost? We're not exactly sure yet. Okay. No. And where can sure. you get the containers from? Um, our Mark Woodland, he already said he's got a contact with um, shipping containers and he can help us get it here and he's got everything ready for us. And we've also been in contact with a guy who made his own house out of shipping containers and he showed us where he got his container from and it's along the Bruce Highway. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 500,000 abandoned containers. Um, what about going to the shipping uh, people? Yeah. Obviously, that was the thought. Yeah, um, I was the president of um, Little Bob Rotary, and we used to do this. And the shipping, the containers will um, be certified for a certain amount of time, and then they become decertified. They can't be used anymore. Um, is that where the five hundred thousand number comes from? I'm not quite sure. So um, our experience is that we would take these and we would actually ship them and we got the shipping company to actually pay for the freight and we would send them to South Africa and make classrooms in them. Those work very well, yeah. So in your research, have you researched where it's been done before in the classrooms? Um, yeah, we've looked at different classrooms that's been made with it. But I've seen some in Vanuatu and Malaysia, South mm -hmm. East yeah. Asian places. Yeah. Okay. Um, I probably could help with some other shipping contacts. Um, Thank you. Right. Yeah. So it's a fantastic. It's really actually it's a fantastic idea. In um, the the target market, would you 
you mentioned a bunch of different markets. You mentioned sort of Central Australia. You mentioned sort of there were some fancy ones or whatever. Where would you start? Uh, in your design, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we want to start at this school, and we got permission from our principal to have a shipping container on our grounds. So we'll start with this school, see where it takes us, and then. Is the shipping container being given to you, or the school? Do you know? We. Think, think so. so. We've been We're told, a meeting, but we haven't confirmed it yet. Okay. You've done so well to get permission to get it onto your school site. Just that's your that's MVP. Good. What a great showcase! And you know that that will you'll be able to generate lots of publicity from that. And really, you should start thinking about that from now, so that you. Tracking your whole process. Uh, have you got a Facebook page dedicated to it? We haven't no. got any yeah. socials yet. I would certainly suggest you get a Facebook page up and running now so that yep. you can start talking about it and use Paul's example of, you know, and connect with Paul about how Rotary have, um, you know, been able to send, you know, shiploads of these containers out to um, parts of South Africa. In South Africa. And the, and, the, and the shipping company basically paid for the freight. Yeah. So you use examples like, yeah. you know, I'm sure Paul can give you lots of information. Start that journey and get start getting the momentum going so that, because, I mean, you're both so sunny and yeah. delightful, and I think that that will translate very well in a social... So, and one of the things in which we used to do with them, we actually used to um, fill them old computers, uh, wheelchairs, beds, and so forth, so on, and ship them to places that need them. So uh, one of the things I'm just saying, in Rotary, one of the, we really wanted to get more into the Aboriginal communities, mm -hmm. uh, and Rotary hasn't been able to mm -hmm. sort of crack that, so that might be a really nice place to, to, to look at. Two things for me. One is, when you do your trial here, you need to really lock down what it's going to cost for the next ones that you do. And then have you have you actually gauged how many other schools would want one of these yet? No, no. we haven't. Okay. But we should. Yeah. Yeah. So one really good source of information, there's a tender website that the Queensland government runs and you can register with that and it shows you all of the things that they tender and I probably would estimate 30% of the things that pop up there are building extra school facilities. Um, but the really important thing is is that different kinds of schools will have different budgets. So you need to know what your cost is going to be to then be able to say talk to a um, state school and say yes we can build this within your budget. And then that will give you a sort, like an idea of how many customers you'll be able to reach. I think they're the really two important things. How many can you are going to want them and What's the cost? Yeah, and along with that, I'm just thinking whatever to, to start to develop relationships with some of the big shipping companies so that you know how many containers were going to be decertified so that, that you could get first dibs on those and that they then would get the social, they could get social cred from that. Absolutely. So in other words, you know, what are they going to do? They're just going to throw them out or whatever? All of a sudden, you know, you have Maersk Line doing the uh, you know, Central Australia school, da 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 da. It's just really, it's a win win sort of situation. And not just schools, I mean, you know, uh, clinics. Yeah. yeah. You know, there are p places around Australia that are, I mean, I have friends of mine that are running mobile clinics, doctor nurse clinics for, for the homeless, for instance. But something like one of your, um, one of your uh, spaceships. Because it, and because it can be lockable, you know, you could have a clinic set up in remote parts of that, you know, that we know that there's a, a fully serviced clinic there that, you know, might not be open every day of the week, but we know that, you know, that once a month a doctor and a nurse team are going to go there and they don't have to take anything with them because it's all there. There are lots of things that you could look at. Yeah, Sports yeah. facilities, yeah. Yeah. change rooms for, like, Girls AFL football, for yeah. example, is a huge expanding market, but many grounds don't have change rooms for girls. Yeah, just for guys, yeah. yeah. 
Don't get too overloaded, though. Stick with There you go. Yeah. Pick your points. Yeah. yeah. Pick your points. I think I just want to highlight um, how well you guys did at your communication and presentation. Excellent. It was Thank fantastic. You like, didn't miss a beat. Perfect. Well done. So well and done. the passion comes through. Yeah. And, that, that lot, and as Tony was saying at the beginning, it's, it's really the passion because they the drive the whole thing. And, and you both look lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Right, I'm going to give you one, two. Jess and Elsa? Jess and Eliza. Eliza. I'm Jess. Jess, Eliza. It's great. I love your little logo. Flip. That's, that's neat. 
with when you're use when you're re when you're taking pre-loved clothes, all of them will have some kind of brand attached to them, whether it's uh, Kmart or whether it's Gucci or Prada or whatever. Okay, so you need to be very careful when you are rebranding something that you're not rebranding something that's already branded because you don't want to cross over in that market and then end up being in a bit of a hot soup because you're reselling something as your brand when it's essentially maybe somebody else's. So I would just make a, a little suggestion there that your, your own logo label's great, but just have something like remodeled by Flip. Okay. Not just, you know, Flip. Yeah. Remodeled by. And then, you know, that you could build that into something like that into your into your brand, you know, because that's what you're talking about yeah. is remodeling clothes to suit your age range. Um, and if you boys don't mind, I just want to ask one other question. Yeah. Um, cost. Okay, so yes, you can get the clothes fairly reasonably priced. The time it takes you to do the remodeling and then how much you're going to sell for. I think Depop is a great, uh, in fact, I think that would be better than Insta. Insta would be great to showcase your business, but I think Depop, Depop is definitely the way to go right now with, right. with selling um, pre-loved clothes. Yeah. So how are you going to price so that it takes into account your time? Um, well, we were looking at buying clothes, um, like t-shirts and that, for roughly 5 to $7, um, because you can find that at op shops. And then we were going to, um, if we need to add designs such as a pocket and you have to pay for the materials, and so that would, that cost would go into our markup price essentially, and then um, the time it takes for us, but we hadn't properly thought through how much money equals how much time it would You need to be buying your t-shirts for less than five bucks though. Okay. Okay, so you need to be getting things for us for next to nothing okay. in order for you to make a profit. Because to pay yourselves properly, if it, I mean, I don't know if you've ever watched any of these programs where, um, like, tailors and they have these competitions like uh, MasterChef, but for clothing, yeah. yeah. The Great British Sewing Bee, for instance. And they will have competitions within that, like, turn this, you know, thrown away outfit into something that looks amazing. It, it might take you eight hours to make something yeah. new, if you were even if you were charging out at 15 bucks an hour, are you going to price yourselves out of the market? So you just need to think about how you're going to pay yourselves. Yeah. I think it's a great idea, yeah. but you need to be getting your clothing for n zip. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's all I want to ask a question. When you interviewed the 50 people, how many of those people were interested in the fact that you were recycling clothing? Um, about 75% of people. 75%. Yeah. So, did you ask those people <coughs> if they'd be willing to donate their clothes? We didn't, no. Well, we've, um, we haven't fully made any, like, full, like, things yet, but we've started with our old clothing that yep. we want to redo. So, we started with whatever so, we can get yeah. with our money. So, here's the way I think. You're going to go and you're thinking about buying it from an op shop. People have already donated their clothes to the op shop. So, why don't you contact and build an audience that will donate their clothes to you for free and you've got no cost for your mm. clothes and part of your brand can be that you are you're being part of the circular economy right because mm. this is a huge topic at the moment especially with clothes as you know so that will make people feel really cool and good about themselves that one they're donating and hopefully they'll purchase and you might even set up um, like star customers that can they might wear that for a year and they send it back again. It's been circulated twice. Yeah. You know, you might have a, a, a recirculating <laughs> frequent flyer point yeah. system, I don't know, but. I think that's great. Really and then you could have the brand, you know, the label remodeled, and then you could have two stars, so it shows it's been yeah. done twice. And oh, wow. so they get this recognition that they're doing something really important. Yeah. And, you, and you're getting your, your inputs for free. Uh, how good's that? Well, I do. I uh, just want to reiterate Claire's point. You you have to really think about your cost, because um, I know for a fact in in Hong Kong, there's a business that does it all automatically. 
you take your old clothes, you design it, you go away, you have a coffee, and an hour later it's come back and the machine's done it all. So that's their way of minimising that remaking cost. Yeah. You'll have to think about how, how you can do it in a way that you still achieve what you want to achieve and you can make a profit for yeah. yourselves. Okay, thank you. It's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a lot of people out in the community that are right into this. There's, I can think of a couple of people that would probably would like to help you, um, you know, giving advice and, and that sort of thing because they're just super fanatical about this topic. Yeah. All so about your fashion. brand, though, is what I'm saying. You've got to like, sell that brand and make that yeah. the unique thing. So the design, <coughs> you know, and the brand is the brand promise. Mm -hmm. And so you really, you know, you've got to think about what you're, what you're offering. Um, get that really, really sharp. Who would be designing? Are we talking about one-off designs? Are we um, talking about, would there be sort of design um, types, you know, design for, is Flip gonna have, you know, if you're doing, just doing t-shirts or whatever, would you have a certain Flip look? Um, um, yeah, well, for teenagers, um, most of them are interested in like cropped shirts, so um, maybe t-shirts would be cropped and shorts would have different designs on them but there's going to be like a when you when you see the clothing we we want people to be able to be like oh that's from flip you know not just oh that's a second hand clothing yeah, yeah 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 so would you do this design yourself or would you bring in a clothes designer um, or? we were kind of looking at just uh for now like seeing as they come in we've got a few like ideas and stuff for what we could possibly do but we're kind of just basing it on whatever clothes we have and then like doing it ourselves from there. Do you think you need to make up some yes, yeah. samples? Some prototypes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and get some little labels, even if you just hand do them yourselves to start with, on just on some calico or whatever, you know, remodeled by Flop or Flip or made by Flip or uh, recycled by Flip. Um, and I just love that idea of you know having star buyers. You mm. know, it's been this has been recycled three, four times, and, and you know, wow, I've got a I've got a flip, I've got a flip with five stars on. Yeah. You know, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That could be amazing. And research the impact that you're avoiding. So if you know what a new piece of clothing, what kind of environmental impacts and other things that that creates, and if people are just continually buying new clothes, that's that's what they're doing, and you can then communicate that back to the people who want to buy your stuff. They're avoiding that impact. It actually gives them something tangible to know. You know what? Well, I've done some really, I've done some something good here by buying Flip. Yeah. So know what the impact is that you're you're eliminating. And, and I think for this, you should be doing some focus groups. Um, and you know what focus groups are? Eight to twelve people, and you need probably four or five different and basically just ask all these questions. Mm -hmm. What are people interested in? What, what mm -hmm. turns you on? What, what is the price range you'd be looking at? Yeah. Um, and that basically then would also help you focus the brand where would be the strongest with, those, with that target group. Mm -hmm. Plus you'd actually, people may say we're not interested in, in, in t-shirts. I don't know what they're gonna say. They're gonna say we're, we, we want jeans or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you can basically then uh, it helps steer. Yeah. yeah. And I would try um, that logo. Your logo it looks really, really cool. And I would try this this star mm -hmm. thing on with them. What yeah. do you think about that? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Create some um, prestige around. Yeah. You know, getting a five star flip. Yeah. Also, things like what Ryan was saying about statistics. Like it takes twenty seven liters. I think it's twenty seven liters of water to make one cotton t-shirt okay so you know every time you buy a flip t-shirt you're saving 27 litres of water and the waste dies yeah. afterwards yeah and all that sort of stuff where do those go you know flip isn't flip isn't adding to the environmental burden mm. so, okay. and also messages. i think about um through the focus groups when you get to the next phase who on the sunshine coast could be your the chief champion, mm, you know, yeah. like someone really well known, maybe a radio presenter or mm. I don't know, somebody. Yeah. Lisa Curry Kenny or maybe even her son. He gets a lot of attention. Yeah. He 
pretty young. It's great. Um, but somebody that can stand up and be your spokesperson. Mm -hmm. So this is really important. Yeah. Get you a lot of media coverage. Okay. It differentiates you. Yes. Yeah. It's special because it's great. It is special. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing more of what you know, seeing more of what happens with Flip. Yeah. Hopefully we'll yes. see something about you um, <laughs> happening very soon. Good luck, girls. And I'd like to give it to you. Oh, thank you. Well done. Thank you. Nice energy, too, in your presentation. Yes, very good. I'll give you 25. Thank well you. done. And you both look very nice. Okay, thank you. Yeah, love the stripes. series. Um, so what's it about? Control Z is a story about four young people who are learning what it means to grow up in the modern world while also pursuing their dreams of being in a band. They discover the pros and cons of making careers, families and relationships. Uh, the characters are Raven, she's uh, kind of sarcastic as you may have picked up if you could hear it, I don't know. Um, kind of nerdy, she loves drumming, she's a bit of a rock girl, that sort of thing. Um, she has a knack for technology, sarcastic remarks, and being a bit of a nerd, and she plays the drums and guitar in the band. Uh, Wasabi is annoying, he is overly confident and likes to be the centre of attention, but at the same time his like, really supportive friend is kind of the comedic relief. Um, he's very talented in the musical arts, sports, and annoying the jeez out of everyone. His instrument is the electric guitar and the piano. He's the front man of the band. Um, and this is Lloyd. He's very calm and quiet and shy. Um, but while having an outward calm appearance, he's also incredibly nervous. And uh, he has an openly soft side to him that makes him a great friend and plays the bass guitar and ukulele. And then there's Noodle, he's the oldest of them. He doesn't really say much, he sleeps a lot and uh, he, when he does talk it's in another language and when he is awake he's either really angry or eating noodles. <laughs> um, he, he doesn't say much, but despite his expressionless demeanor, he has a very enthusiastic alter ego that will do anything to protect his friends. His instrument is the piano, he loves classical music, and is kind of the old man of the group, in a way. So yeah, that's what you saw was incredibly rough. It was 
the program I was using didn't like me that much, so I couldn't add in the soundtrack that I added in. Um, created some music for it in the background. It didn't like that, so sorry. Um, <laughs> the ideas for future episodes would be things like the music queen of the forest. The, the group eventually end up forcing themselves to form a band together even though they really uh, have quite a lot of conflict with each other. Um, they go to the forest in the hopes that they can find this lady called the music queen of the forest and she can apparently give the characters an idea for a song but they end up going there and finding that they make friends with her bodyguard instead, Noodle, and, um, and he joins their band they find that instead of asking for a song, they have to work together to make one. Um, yeah, that's Control-Z. <laughs> the story, I'd like to focus it, the, the audience, I'd like to focus it on teenagers and young adults especially, because while it looks cartoony and childish, um, I'd like it to have some more mature themes. Not like inappropriate mature, but like not downgrading the audience. I've seen a lot of cartoons that just sort of, you know, like, burp and fart and it's not, it's really downgrading to the audience, it's just like talking down at children instead of encouraging them to think a bit deeper about entertainment and I'd like it to reflect some deeper meanings of life. So the characters would develop as the series go on and form, form some relationships and go back, solve their problems from recent life that they've kind of neglected. and. The focus of the story is while they're in a band, they're also growing up. They're young, they want to figure out who they are, and they make a bunch of ridiculous mistakes, but then work together to resolve them. Um, this is some of my work that I do. I, I love animation, I really, really want to be involved in animation, and I love 2D, I also love stop motion, I'd like to give a shot at that. Um, and I love comics as well. So just anything in the cartoon genre, I am all over it. Uh, I do it a lot. I've spent a lot of time drawing. Probably too much. And uh, yeah, that's Control Z. So oh, thank you. And everything there is all your original work? Yes. Ow. Um, it took a while to get the animatic together. The, there was a lot of there are a lot of obstacles, um, including getting voice actors. I ended up having to just grab the closest person near me and say, please, can you please be the voice for this character? Uh, they were kind enough to do that. And, um, so yeah. how, long, how long did it take in hours? To, what would be your estimate? To do the animation? Mm, to, to um, produce that one. I worked incredibly hard all weekend and yesterday as well. Um, and the day before that, so it was like, the animation was about four days to get mm, it done, so I'm guessing. 40 hours or? Yeah, roughly. <laughs> yeah. Spent a lot of time and it's not even complete, so it gives you an idea of how much time it takes mm. to do an actual completed piece. It's very stressful. It may not be complete, but it was very impactful. Like, I, just watching it and then hearing you talk, yeah. it's perfectly matched to the, what I think you want to achieve. Yeah. So I wouldn't think it's pretty good as I it was is. totally impressed, yeah. personally. Thanks. Really impressed. So what, what are you hoping to achieve from a, um, we know what the creative goals are. Um, what's your, what, what are you trying to achieve with that? What are you using it for? Um, what's, what's your vision? My vision is, like I said, to, to kind of redefine what we classify as children's entity. Because I notice that kids are a lot smarter than we take them to be, and we we get a lot of um, cartoons that are just they're dull. The, they're the same thing every episode. The the characters don't develop. It's just they kind of slap it together. And they're like, oh, this is what kids like. Let's give that to them, and they'll be entertained. But I think kids are a lot smarter. Um, recently, there was a show released from Brisbane called Bluey, and I was completely impressed by this show. It's homemade in Queensland and it tackles so much more of a deeper concept of children, like their psychological thinking and um, I think that's just a lot nicer than 
a lot of the other shows I've seen are very negative. I don't, they don't mean to be, but I think adults just don't know that kids understand a lot more. But I also want to aim it at young adults and teenagers because teenagers get a lot of influence from media that's not true um, and entertainment. Things like I really want to focus on the importance of developing yourself before entering a relationship, which is what the characters have to do. At the start of the show, they enter several relationships with other people and they haven't developed themselves yet. And uh, so it just crashes after a bit. And then near the end, they'd have to go back to where their problem started. So with Wasabi, his problem started at home. He has to go back and resolve his problems with his family before he can make a family of his own. So. Can I ask how old are you? 15. I was just going to say you're very intelligent. I think you're an old soul in a young body. <laughs> very wise. Um, I, I'm, I did, I'm pretty certain I saw you the first time around in a fishbowl. Yeah. And um, it was great to see the, the animation. Yeah. And I think that are you thinking of maybe having a YouTube channel to start with? Yeah. With the animation? Yeah. Or, or my own website. Or your own website, um, yeah. I have seen a bit of chaos happen with people who upload their stuff to YouTube, so maybe I just create my own site and yeah. then upload things to that. Yeah. I'd like to make a bunch of different um, short uh, videos, sort of like the one you just saw, yeah. different storytelling and stuff. And other mediums as well, like stop motion, I want to give that a yeah. shot next. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and do you want to make a profit or you, uh, do you have other goals? It's not, yeah. not, not for profit. Um, I'm not really big on money at the moment. I do need, <laughs> I do need money for things like getting better equipment. Yes. The software I use for that, I, it's not that great, so I do need money for equipment, but in terms of my goal, it's not important to me. It's the only validation I need is that people find it important and that it impacts them in some way. So this show, Bluey or whatever, is that on TV? Or it is, is, yeah. It's on TV. Um, and it sort of aligns with your thinking in that it's more uh, meaningful yeah. something that's home for kids. Um, and it's homemade. Yeah. Um, well, the studio they work in is a very recently made studio and the people who work there are very close together so that there was the fact that they um, their work was had something about it that um, made it feel a bit more realistic the relationships between the stories about the children and their parents and the plot is literally just they are a family and they do things together but the way they handle it is that the father is actually there. Whereas if you see shows like, for example, Peppa Pig, the father, he is hardly there for the kids. He's just big, he's lazy, and he just eats food, and the mum is there for the kids. So their business, they, their business, it might be interesting to have a discussion with them. Yeah. Maybe even talk about partnering with them. Yeah, I definitely actually want to work with that studio. And so, if you went to their studio or whatever, they may, if they basically have the heart, which you seem to say they do, yeah. um, and you've got the heart in this and whatever, you're looking for synergies between yourself and, and them. And then you may be able to teach them some stuff, and, and they would be able to teach you. Yeah. And how, how, how long have they been together, do you know? Uh, I think it's only been a matter of a year or two. Um, but their their success with Bluey has made them able to create more shows because it became, it's now the number one show on ABC. It's broken all the records. It's got millions of people watching it. They're going to send it worldwide now just because they have that more realistic feel to it. So that's what I want to try. So do you write the story? Obviously you write yeah. the story. And how many stories have you written? Um, well, before I wanted to do this, I wanted to be an author when I was younger. Yeah. So I used to write and write and write like <coughs> stories, but then I decided to turn to screenwriting. So uh, yeah, I've written a couple of scripts before, um, short stories and stuff to test it out a bit. 
I've contacted other people who can help me, um, you know, professional screenwriters who know yeah. how to lay it out, how to tell the story through screenwriting. So I talk to them, they give me feedback. So, you know, I've improved a bit in that way. Um, and I've, I'm planning on going to JMC Academy um, in Brisbane. Uh, I contacted, um, there was at the school's, what was it, the Careers Expo? Yeah, I talked to uh, the guy who was representing JMC there. He said he was very excited to see me at the Academy in a couple of years, so Excellent. I'm excited to go there. Do you have an ask from today, yeah. from, from us? Uh, yeah. But, uh, do you guys know anyone that I can uh, hook up with that would know anything about furthering this as a career or anything? I know the um, cartoonist that used to do all the cartoons in West Australia is now based in Brisbane. He's yeah. trying to do his artwork for mental health oh, yeah. programs. Yeah. I could connect you with him. Cool. He's a very famous cartoonist. When down the track you're ready, yeah. I know the. Uh, I don't know if it would be any help, but I, I personally know the comedy commissioner for ABC. Kowalski. I don't know whether that would be of any help, but yeah. um, I, I know Rick personally, so you know, that, I don't know whether that would be a help right now, but, yeah, but that's, that's, all, that's what I can think at the moment, that I haven't got anybody that's kind of local on hand. Okay, that's okay, thank you. And are you looking for investment at all? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've really thought, thought that far ahead yet. Or phrase it differently. Do you, what, do you have some equipment and software that you really need to be able to progress your, your learning capability? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I just probably need a better animation program to get this done at a high quality. I've been looking at uh, Flash CC. It's Adobe. Um, that's like one of the higher quality ones. They're pretty expensive. There's also um, Toon Harmony that has been used for countless shows. I can't name them, <laughs> but yeah, those two are the main ones. So what, what do they cost? Uh, a year, but in a year it might be like in the 800s or something. Okay. So yeah. that's subscription though. Yeah, subscription. but that's, that'd be for like premium probably. Yeah. You want some? You probably want premium though to match your yeah. intelligence and creativity. I would have thought. Yeah. I I would also think about because um, you're not really in, a, in the about business. It's more about your career and your yeah. purpose. Um, when you do identify that you might need some funding, a really good source probably would be philanthropic mm -hmm. funds because that's what they want to do. They want to. They're for cause, they're purely for cause, and they want to meet up with the right people yeah. who are trying to do something really important. Yeah. And I think what you're trying to do is just connect with, with teenagers and young adults yeah. and really talk properly. Yeah. And would probably really resonate with quite a few of those, um, those funds. Yeah. So I can dig up a few of my own, they might help with you too. Quite often they do scholarships too. Yes. I think the Meyer family, yeah. who used to own Myers, they've got just did one recently actually, which they pay you know, like $120,000 to do whatever you want to do, but obviously you've got to yeah. meet their requirements. But that's an example of what you might be able to do down the track. Yeah. If you know those people at ABC, mm -hmm. what I might suggest is maybe make a contact and actually get this young lady in to talk to the people who are supporting the show uh, and just to start networking there and then maybe work back to the, the blues development because then you're coming in from the top. You're not trying to come yes. in from the bottom. So you're coming back in the top and then you'd have a lot better traction with the blues people mm -hmm. saying, oh, ABC is introducing this. If you, if you can get that animation looking really as you want it to look, and then who's your facilitator? Steve? Oh, hello Tanya. Hi. Get it looking really schmick yeah. as you want it to look. Then 
you contact me, yeah. and I will, I will send that to to Rick and get him to to look at it yeah. and give you some feedback, and then see where whether that leads to whether how it how yeah it leads. how it will. I can't guarantee, but I can yeah. certainly send it to Rick and talk to him about it and copy you in on that email and and yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, the, and the thing is, is that we, when you do something like that, you ask for wise counsel yes. from this chap. You don't ask for anything more no. but wise counsel, and then you could then talk about the movie and whatever, and then yeah. see how exactly. it develops. Because through that conversation, they will see your authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just stands out. health issues are a bigger problem than ever before, with one in six kids aged 10 to 19 being affected by mental illness. Not only this, but more than 45% of people will experience a problem with their mental health throughout their lifetime. We aim to raise awareness for mental health and the improvement, sorry. We aim to help raise awareness for mental illness and the importance of mental health in general by creating original music on the topic. We hope that through our music, conversations will be started and that kids will be able to talk about their struggles more openly rather than suffering alone. It is our aim to educate people at this young age that they will think better about how they approach this topic. We have contacted the organization Headspace. This was about ways we can avoid possible triggers and or triggering concepts as we both understand that mental illness is a sensitive topic that needs to be handled with care. Our main targeted age range is from 12 to 19 because this is the age that most mental illnesses start. And we feel that being better educated on mental health at a young age will set kids up better for their futures and any problems that they will face. At this moment, we are working on finalizing the writing of our MVP, Underneath That Smile, before heading into the recording and production stage. Kim is going to give you a copy of our MVP. At this stage, it only has lyrics and chords. However, we are currently putting together a backing track and finalizing the melody. We aim to release Underneath That Smile later this year after production. During this day and age, mental health is starting to become a prominent focus in many musicians' songs, which is really important. However, the pop music of this time, more often than not, presents mental illness as something to be ashamed of or the song only shows it at a very surface level. All in all, today's music does more harm than good. Our music assures others that mental health problems are nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, we encourage people to educate themselves on mental health and we dig much deeper into all aspects of mental health. Should we have a profit in the future, we intend on giving all, sorry, half of those profits to mental health organizations such as Kids Healthline and Headspace to support those affected by mental illness. At this point in time, we are more focused on creating something that can be shared rather than something we can get money from. Of course, we would like to see a profit in the long run, but at the moment, it is not a priority. To record and produce our MVP, a recording studio varies from $60 to $100 for a one hour session. This includes the recording as well as mixing and production. For now, we are using social media to connect with our audience and pot potential customers. We also wish to release our songs on YouTube as well as the radios 96.5 and 106.5. We do have some contacts that we just need to phone and talk to. Kim and I are the only members of our team. We both sing and write our own original music. We started to write music together this year, however, we have shared our music with each other for the past few years. Kim also plays the piano and we are both currently learning to play the guitar. As people who have been affected by mental illness, we know from experience the impact it can have on your life and how alone it can make you feel. 
We aim to not only create music, but to break the stigma around admitting you're struggling and to encourage people to accept help from others. Our unique value proposition is that it isn't about the money for us. We just want to help raise awareness for people who struggle. What we really truly want is for people is for more people to be aware of how mental health and mental illness affects the lives of the community, as well as for everyone to feel comfortable enough to share their struggles with each other. If you would like to go check out our Instagram, it is at underscore breathe underscore 19. Um, please take some time to read through the lyrics now. tempo is the song? It's um, 19. You got anything else you want to add in your pitch? That was it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well done, girls. Thank you. With Headspace, what's the discussions you've had with Headspace? So we sent them an email and um, ask them like what topics we should kind of avoid or yeah. like tread carefully and how we can just like make sure that we don't include anything in our songs that could possibly be more harmful than helpful than the triggers yeah, yeah. so with, with Headspace I did a lot of work with Headspace when I was um, they headed up the brewery in the Wuha and I make an offer to go in and meet with Headspace with you to try to figure out whether there's possibly a partnering sort of situation there, um, possibly also the introduction of you guys into their program. Because as you know, that their program is very, very wide. Everything from psychologists to finding jobs to um, drug dependency, da 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 so there may be a situation there where they would love for you to come in and do programs with them. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you will make contact with them. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's really yep. that'd be awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, because they really, um, hearing your pitch, they would really, really love you. They also have, in the back of Headspace, they have a coffee club that guys from Headspace are working through habits and you also can probably go in there and play too? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, I, I know we were going to put the fish tank together, so yeah. how, um, I mean, he's still building his song, but have you got more validation from other other teenagers around what you plan to do and what do they think about what you're doing? Now that you sort of, have you shared it a little bit with Um, so we've let a few people read through it. Yeah. Um, and we kind of sung the metal yeah. metally, <laughs> melody to um, a fellow music yep. um, friend of ours. Yeah. 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 And she said that it was awesome and she'd love to help us out with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So you got some good feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And with the people that read the lyrics, they were, yeah. what did they find? Or how did they? Pretty much mostly it's just been very positive feedback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Constructive criticism. Yeah. yeah, of course. Have you been? Have you recorded in a studio before? Um, so we've just opened up the recording studio in at school. Yeah, yeah, at our school. Um, so.
So we haven't done any like music recording, but um, our friend Alison, she did some voice recording. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. yes, and I also I helped one of our other friends that does music recording his song. And that was here. Yeah. Okay. So, but that doesn't cost you sixty to a hundred dollars an hour. No. So my question is, why would you go to a commercial studio when you could do it here? Um, because the teachers that have to be in the recording studio aren't available all the time okay. and we can't ask her to take time like fully out of her day. Can you can you structure your time around when yep. they are available? Yeah. I believe we could. Because I don't think you need to spend that money. I, I've yes. in, I was a professional musician for 10 years so in and out of studios a lot during yeah. that time and they cost a lot of money and you won't be in there for an hour mm. you might as well say you'd be in there a minimum half a day yeah so and a hundred bucks an hour that's fairly cheap so unless you've got five six seven eight hundred dollars i would structure my time around when the school can fit you in and get it done here or at the very least you, you can record this at home yourselves to start with as an MVP, yeah. all right? There's pl so much software now that you can use, and I would certainly suggest you look at a far cheaper option and get your music out there, because I think that this is coming from the heart and soul. It doesn't need a flash recording studio. What we need is to hear and feel what you're saying. Because yeah, the question, have you got some time milestones that you have got that you want to have it ready by to link in with maybe Headspace events or some of the radio, we talked about radio station events last time. Yeah. Have you got a plan, a timeline oh. that you're trying to work to? It was the start of next term. Yep. So week one or two. Okay. So you got that there and now you can take Claire's advice and yeah. move around your schedule yeah. to hit that point. Well, I think we've got mental health week at the beginning of October. Yeah, yeah, we do. I would love to have it out by the start of like, yeah. October yeah. so we can have it for mental health week. You just make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Make it happen. That's a good target. Even if you do it at home. <laughs> get Just download some free software. You can both have some equipment. <laughs> so like our guitars and stuff. So yeah. yeah. You've got yeah. the messaging down, Pat. It's great. Presentation. <laughs> you just need the song. Absolutely. And off you go. And then link up with Paul. And then I'll take you into and actually I link you into um, depending on where it goes to 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 you to we um, do walk for mental health and you might be able to set up something and play your songs there mm -hmm. too. And Sounds great. Thank you. Hello. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, yes, the Probably thinking little 15 year old boy with the guitar in his hands trying to tell us his story to get some money in his hands. Well, I'm gonna make this one quick, I'm gonna make it short. I don't write things for people, I write this from my heart. So when you hear these words that come out of my mouth. They're not just stories, they're a place I go to escape my house. I write about social pressure, anxiety. To connect with my age group, or oh, those young teens with the rough childhoods. The ones that can't escape, the ones that I hope this music could be their saving grace.
that last night. What? Uh, hi. Hi. I'm Kobe Michael. I'm a 15 year old musician and singer songwriter. Um, I'm hoping to get some recognition and get paid for my music. To be honest, I just want to share my emotions and feelings through music. I started singing at the age of seven and I had singing lessons at the age of ten. I've also recently started learning guitar. Um, I've been playing for seven months now and making music videos on YouTube. Uh, I've done many gigs in front of a hundred to a thousand people, so I'm used to singing in front of strangers. So that's a bit about me. So here's some feedback I've been given on my social pages. So what music is said in the song? Um, I write about social pressure, anxiety. So I tend to write a lot of personal songs because music is medication for me. It helps me clear my feelings and connect to a lot of people as some of them have experienced what I have. One of the things that I've said about my music, I don't tend to write for people, I write tending to connect to whoever ever listens. What I aim to do is honestly save people's lives. I know that sounds big, but where do you go when you're sad? Most people tend to listen to sad songs or whatever they're feeling. Um, for me, from personal experiences, music has honestly helped me. Um, I also have a busking license to get out on the street and get noticed so people can realize who I am and to show what I can provide. Now, <laughs> what I'm asking for is $135 to pay my busking fee every six months. So that $135 will last me a year and a half. What I'm also asking, which can make a major, which can majorly help me in music, is an electric guitar, which is going to provide a new sound to my music, but it's $1,000. And I'm also asking for a home recording studio, so that I can record and publish music from, how, from my home, which costs $400. All this so that I can make more songs, go out busking, and honestly connect to people by doing what I love. I know it's a big ask, but I genuinely believe that I can help people day to day. Um, if you're interested here on my social pages, um, I post everything like music and about my life. So, yeah. Thank you. Wow. And you wrote that last night? Yeah. Is that how, you write, is that how quick you write all of them? Um, that, was, that was kind of just like a, a thought. I can't play like a three minute song in front of them, so I thought I'll make it I'll make it quick and snappy just to the point of what I do. So most of my songs are pretty sad and personal because I aim to connect. I've had I've had adults in tears, some of them, because like they've had past experiences what I write about. Yeah. <laughs> and where where do you busk? Where do I bust? Why do you busk at that particular Well, way? I only actually just put my licence in last week Thursday. Okay. But I'm aiming to busk at like Mooloolaba, Caloundra, and uh, Mullaney. Mm -hmm. So um, Wild Bus there is it's pretty popular. But I mean, that's I'm learning covers, and I'm going to play a couple of originals because I know that music can control like moods very quickly. Mm -hmm. So, and that when you're busking, how are you going to? Uh, what's the link from that to getting people to come and see your material and, and follow you on social media? Like, how are you going to connect? Busking to your purpose of making them happier. Obviously, um, other than right then and there. Like, I feel like my songs are probably going to say it all, really. If if they hear something and they hear a specific word that triggers a memory, which could be like, okay, I'll listen to this clip for a bit, and they hear that song and they go, this actually like connected to me, they might think, okay, I'll check out what else he has. Yep. So I'm kind of, it's not really relying, but it's depending well, on that my words are going to hit someone. Feel that's better than having a little. Oh, I'll also have like a little box. My purpose is X, Y, Z. I personally, I think music. Like, if they if they're gonna listen, then if they enjoy that, they'll go to the next step. And okay. So the busking license. What uh, did you have to do to get that? And um, what I does it allow you to do? What what are the what are the rules? So I had to fill out a four-page form just explaining what I do and like giving them some links of everything, like giving them examples and everything. That cost forty-five dollars to put in, and now the council's going over it to see like where I can bus, where like what I can do with it, and whether I'm good enough to go out. 
and then with that busking, it's going to help me get noticed, um, get a bit of money and just a pocket to spend, like whether I need that for more of music equipment, like strings and stuff. And yeah, so it's sort of noticement and money. That's why I'm busking. But yeah, like the main reason that I sort of, if you guys do take anything from this, if if you did enjoy like sort of that snippet and actually want to go check that, my account's out. If you think they're all right, just if you can mention my name to any musician that you hear, because I'd love to be like an opener to shows just to get my name out there. And if people like that, they'll come back and listen to more. So, so with the busking license, would it allow you, if you go down to the Lula Bar Esplanade, sometimes they have people actually playing at an individual restaurant or whatever, yeah. would you be doing, you know, yeah. going to the restaurant owners and saying, hey, yeah, can I, I, can yeah. I play here? Yeah, I would be. Um, that's sort of what I do already. Like, um, I'm, I've am i been going into, because the music festival's coming out from Millennium, and I'm going just around asking, like, how can I apply to that? And then we also have cafe owners in Melania. I just walk up and I say, Are you, do you guys do open mics or do you guys want a musician? Yeah. And then I give them, um, I'm actually making a business card at the moment, which I've just got the sort of foundation for. But yeah, just a handout. But otherwise I just write it. My Instagram want them to send me like a DM or an email or something if they're interested. And you've only been playing guitar seven months. Yeah, seven months now. What other instrument do you play? Uh, just guitar and singing. I'm trying to learn piano. So, before the guitar, we started learning guitar, you were writing songs? On, I just used GarageBand with the little beat making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, okay. And that's what you were writing songs to? Yeah. And then I kind of, I think guitar was just sort of, I still do that if I want like a poppy sort of yeah. song. But guitar sort of just got that more raw and you can carry it everywhere. Yeah. I just kind of like it more. Uh, you've got on your... Th um, your ask a uh, home recording studio yeah. and electric guitar and you've got a jazz master. Why would you, was um, that a specific? I, I think I went into Shake It Up Music to buy that guitar. Yes. And I also held that one. Yeah. And I, I had it, I plugged it in and had a quick strum and I just thought, I want that. Like, that's something that just sounds good, it feels comfortable. Yeah. So I found that yesterday and that home recording studio was recommended by the guys at Shake It Up Music too. Yeah, they Mark. said that's the most, yeah affordable one and best quality. Okay, so you, because obviously if you have an electric guitar, yeah. um, is that a semi-acoustic? Yeah, that's a semi-acoustic. Okay, so if you have an electric guitar, are you planning to play it live as well? Yeah. So you'll need an amp? Yeah, I've got, I've got one of those. You have? Yeah, I've already got one of those. What have you got? Um, it's, um, what's, it's not a, um, what is it, um, not, well, it begins with M. Marshall? Marshall, that's it. Marshall. Okay. Yeah, I've got a Marshall M. Okay. Just one of those small ones. Though. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But it, yeah, it does the job. If you could have any guitar, what would it be? Tanglewood. Tanglewood semi acoustic, yeah. That's, I, I changed it because I thought I've already got one. <laughs> so, but if I could have any sort of guitar, it would be a Tanglewood semi acoustic, yeah. Okay. We priced it? $600. That's cheaper than the yeah. 1000 Yeah, but I mean, I've, that's the thing, it's either I get another acoustic, semi-acoustic, or I get an electric guitar which could open up another door to different sounds. Yeah. What about um, any kind of partnerships you could do with different groups that have the same kind of purpose as your music? Um, Tate Donathy, he's not here today because he's doing a certain area. But um, he's doing a YouTube channel, so I'm kind of good mates with him. But I also have a guy called Kit Cotter down in Melania, and he does like heaps of gigs. And also Mr. Bullock, he does weddings. So if I ever needed, like, I could just ask him, like, is there any opportunity that I could go? Yeah, weddings. And, yeah, like do something like that. Yeah. What about, uh, but more around uh, mental health? Um, mental health. I'd, I would be really sort of, I wouldn't mind going to the children's hospital just to like, yeah play them some music if they were down to oh. listen, but I mean sort of, I really just want to get my music out on Spotify, which is why I'm asking for the home recording studio and like different equipment, just so I can get sort of the best song and connect with people the best. Because mm. that's how I found like most of my new musicians is on Spotify. And then they listen to that and say, hey, listen to this, do, they, do you like that? Because if people really connect to it, they'll share it. So that's why I write pretty deep when I do. 
I like your voice very much. It's, it's distinctive. I'd like to hear it under amplification. Yeah. I'd like to hear how it could bring out some of the some of the qualities and the tones that you've got there. Because um, I think that you've got a voice that could stand out in the marketplace. Um, I know that's not necessarily your goal, but yeah. um, I mean, anything to do with music would just be massive. Mm. I think you'll love your voice. How many songs have you written? Like fully complete, probably over a hundred fully complete. Um, but that's the thing for me is I write them on the guitar, and that's when I need that home recording studio because then I can put them down, add whatever I need to by myself because I have this beat making machine where you can add drums and snares and everything that you need to, and then I can publish that. So I've probably got around two hundred ready to ready to go, like record, and I've probably got fifty that I'm sort of halfway through, sort of working on rough. They're here and there. Yeah. If you if you could find a middle ground to, f to have some sort of message at your busking point around, I'm aiming to help the community be happier. I would be I would have to sponsor your busking fees. Yeah. But that's on the proviso that you're clear that I'm here to help the community. Yeah. Um, like, I genuinely one thing that I've always wanted to do is just literally. I've realised that you have power in music and you can yeah. control people's emotions and how they feel during the day. So yeah. I would just be down to just play happy songs and make them like happier. So I'll leave it. It's an invite for you to think about. If you, if you can come up with some sort of message that's within your, you feel happy with and it's in your brand, and, but yeah. it says to the community, I'm here to make you happy. Yeah. I'll sponsor you for two years. And we'll see happily put your links on my website if you take some videos of your yeah. Thank you. That's a great offer. Wow. It's good. Oh, it's, it's, a really good it's a really great start. You've got a great yeah. voice, oh, mate. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Obviously, your presentation is excellent because you sang, <laughs> sang it. <laughs> I love music. I love all types of music, especially rap and hip hop. I want you to think about your favourite song, or just any song that you like. Now how does this song make you feel? Do you know why this song makes you feel this way? People never really think about the, what, the, what message the artist is trying to convey, or why the instrumentals and even the tone of voice have such a big impact on how the song makes you feel. We want to listen to good music, music that makes us feel a certain way, to help change our emotions, whether it's positive or negative. It's important for people to know the meaning behind their favourite songs. Rap on Rap, the podcast, is a music reviewing and analysing podcast that allows rap music fans to be more connected and have an understanding of their favourite artists from Australia and all around the world. The episodes include deep analysis of new releases, old school rap and everything in between, a breakdown of the topics brought up in the rap music scene, information about the rappers' lives and how that affects the topics they decide to talk about, and of course, my review on the albums and singles. I've come to realise in my market research that I conducted at the beginning of my journey that 43.3% of students just in this year group predominantly listen to rap music when asked whether they enjoy pop, rock, rap, rock or indie the most. That's almost half of the students in this grade, and if this question was asked to other grades, I'm sure the answer would be pretty similar. Although there are so many people listening to this music, there is not nearly enough praise paid towards the rap industry and the ideas and issues being brought up in this music scene. Lovers of rap and hip-hop like me, and so many others, have limited ways of receiving information about their favourite artists, the music and their lives, which is very essential for people to know, to really understand the meaning behind a song and the way that we're supposed to see, perceive the message of the song. It's just like any other podcast. You're able to gain information on a topic that means something to you, whilst on your way to school, work, or just a brisk walk in the afternoon.
Obviously, not everyone is going to listen to this podcast. The market size for a rap and hip hop podcast is clearly going to be smaller than something like a health and well-being podcast. But I think that the need for something like this in this genre of music will interest a lot of people into listening. The market size is small, but will completely target one specific audience, rap and hip hop lovers that have a burning desire to learn more, just like me. This podcast will benefit listeners by giving them both a connection with me and a connection with the artists that I'm talking about. There's nothing more connecting between a listener and music than learning about the artist's life and where they've come from to be here today. Hearing the struggles of artists and the obstacles that they faced on their journey to fame can inspire young people to pursue what they love or just help them believe in themselves. I feel that the, rap, the art of rap can really help people and being able to have access to this sort of information is a big win for rap lovers. In any market, there's always competition. The way that I'm choosing to communicate my message is different from other people in the same industry. There are still YouTube music reviewers such as Anthony Fantano or deep analysis podcasters such as Cole Concha from Dissect. But the things that they decide to focus on are very different to what I'm focusing on. Their platforms don't really bring in the life of the artist and only focus on the finished product itself. But I feel like the life of the artist needs to be brought into it to actually understand the product that is being released, whether it's an album or a single. So where to go from here? I recorded and edited my first podcast and I'm ready to launch as soon as I have access to a pod podcast platform. I don't have any real financial needs as of yet, but some money to go towards advertising on social media when I launch my podcast, or some money to go towards buying a good quality USB microphone so my podcast recordings can be high quality would be fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> You say it's a small market, but your market research showed that it was 43.5% of the people that you researched said that they were interested in hip hop and, and uh, rap. Yeah, so that's like our age group, yeah. though. Yeah. That's still a sizable market. Yeah. And, you know, podcasts can be listened to all over the world. So I think your total addressable market is probably a lot bigger than you maybe think stage so uh, yeah I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it was a small market you picked a, a, a genre that sorry Paul. it may be a niche market yes which I think is what she's saying which could yeah. be large but it's a niche yeah absolutely and why not there's you know the history are you thinking about looking at the history of rap for instance and where rap started right from way back as the, you know storytellers and poets and how it has come through as an art form to become what it is today yeah definitely um i would i don't want to just look at rap in this day i want to look at old school rap and how it's transformed over time yeah yeah and your passion is great. I was here maybe what, four or six months ago, or whatever, and, and we chat, chat, and we were just as passionate about this. So it's a very, very big focus of you, and yeah. and has been for some time. Yeah. yeah. What's your actual? How would you describe your business model? Do you want it to be a business ultimately, or is this more of a um, sharing passion sort of thing? What's? Yeah, definitely more of a passion project. I'm not looking to make any money out of it. Okay. I just want to share my passion. Yeah. But I mean you could monetize it. Yeah. You could monetize it through something like Patreon, which a lot of um, podcasters use. So that you know people like myself for instance can give a monthly subscription. Yeah. And then those tend to start at about a dollar and and then you get extras. You offer extras so um, you know ad free um, ad free episodes there's other things that like you can partner with um, com companies like, um, like the, you know, the, there would be music related companies perhaps that you yeah. could, you know, like one of the podcasts that I subscribe to also is partnered with Audible for books yeah. because he does a lot of research and so he gets a, a bit of a kicker from that. So there are lots of ways that you could monetize even if you weren't particularly interested in making 
So Elizabeth, one of the things, if I can remember correctly, we were talking about is that you'd actually have interviews with the actual uh, musicians or whatever, and you'd go, as you were saying, into the musician's life and story or whatever. Yeah. Is, is, does your competition do anything even approaching that? Um, no, my competition doesn't really do interviews with the artists, but I'm kind of pulling away from that now. From that now? Yeah. Why is that? Um, I don't know. I just decided not to do that and go in a bit of a different direction. Yeah. How long does it take to do a podcast? Like, what's the first one? Obviously, it would take a bit longer, but how much time did you invest in today? Um, that took me about two DeLorean days to do. Yep. So probably about six hours altogether to research and write. Yep. And then about an hour and a half to record. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, for me, um, I was a professional musician for 10 years and the background, people's background stories, I think, are infinitely more interesting a lot of the time than actually just an interview where you're generally going to be asking them about what they're doing right now. Yeah. So when we understand where a lot of the rap culture came from, it has a very distinct story that you know has come out of fighting for um, the rights of the unheard and you know the, the disenfranchised, the people at the bottom of the pile, you know. So it's there are some really amazing stories and also some tragic ones, you know, around people like uh, Tupac Shakur yeah. and you know, and that's why stories are then taken into, you know, Netflix land. So you get, you know, you get um, content on the screen about people like um, Tupac or uh, um, Eminem or whoever it might be, yeah. um, and Snoop, because people are interested in how did they get to where, how, how did that happen? You know, in some instances, rap saved, has really saved somebody's existence, saved their lives, and it's, but also within that culture with, you know, the east side and the west side, of American rap culture, there's also a lot of um, destruction and yeah. you know, not such great stories, but nevertheless, they're still interesting. Yeah, definitely. So, from my perspective, I'd be really interested in listening to your podcast. So, it would, it would certainly interest somebody like me. So, it's not even just people your age group, you know, it's people that are probably older than your mother. Because <laughs> um, I bet you one dollar I'm older than. Um, that would be still keen to listen to. Yeah. To, to, to publish a podcast, is there a cost associated with that? Um, I haven't looked too much into that yet. I think there's some platforms that it is free, but then there's not as many people using those platforms. Yeah. 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 But I will look into that. Yeah, I would, I would put a bit of time into that just to know. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't want to be a profit based business, that's fine. But there might still be some costs you're going to have to cover just to keep balanced yeah. and neutral and um, be able to publish it and, and keep it going and yeah. you know, give yourself that time to keep doing more research and more podcasts. So, yeah. yeah. Good idea. Awesome. <laughs> Are there any radio stations that, um, that specifically focused on you know, rap and uh, hip hop or whatever that you could, you could sort of partner with? A little bit for, for more, I guess, uh, elevated illustration of who you are and whatever, and maybe you could also be win win for the radio station. Um, yeah, so Triple J, they have a um, they have rap music shows at night time, um, so that's definitely, yeah, they partner with a lot of um, underground rappers and make them bigger. So there might be a connection that you could make there with them if they have some certain underground rappers that they're really after. Then they might you could do shows and podcasts on those guys. Yeah. And then if they basically are saying, 
Oh yeah, <clears throat> Elizabeth is giving a podcast on this, and if you want to know more about this artist, blah blah blah. Yeah. And you get instant free marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's a win-win for them too, yeah. because you know it just supports what they're trying to do also. Yeah. Does anyone know anyone at Triple J? <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, though, I would and uh, I would suggest actually, you, if you approach Triple J, you want to you want to talk to the, the person who basically wants to come under some portfolio, or whatever, and talk to them about that. Because yeah. that might then help you. They might have a certain form or fashion that they would be um, more uh, attractive to. So then you could actually fo focus in, you know, whether it's a ten-minute segment or five-minute or twenty-minute or what, you know, what, what do they think would work? Yeah. And so these people who are in that uh, space, they have certain vision and certain views on those things that might actually help structure your podcast. Yeah. yeah. So it's finding partners that help you achieve the purpose that you want to achieve. Yeah. That's sort of what we're talking about. Is Keep your purpose to be whatever that is, mm -hmm. and see how you can get other people to help you deliver it. Yeah. Yeah. Make it easy. Yeah. Because I think what you're saying is there's not too much competition in that niche, quote unquote, market. Yeah. Um, and that there could be some really good wins. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the passion. Yeah. Yeah. Keep. Uh, well, you will anyway. That will drive you to succeed. Yeah. If you want something badly enough, you'll make it happen. I loved your presentation, by the way. I love the orange on black. Thank you. Great. Right. <laughs> Good choice. Very on trend colours. Very. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You really nailed that. Uh, right. So Better give you some dollars. Twenty-five for me. Well done. good that you, you continue to keep that passion and it's yeah. quite a niche sort of thing and if you just do that you'll break through you will yeah. but um, <clears throat> you need to talk to people out there and get some help give us a shot and we'll give you one being there coffee is our mobile coffee business officially launched in february 2019 by myself sam uh keona demelza and chelsea the passion was um, to create amazing tasting coffee and have a great customer service experience is what brought us to our early success. Our business journey started as a new team of young entrepreneurs, having a passion for coffee, giving back to the community and also giving back to the environment as much as we can. For this reason, we label ourselves as environmentally friendly. We are currently located at Glasshouse Christian College. This was originally to, to gain experience and show our love of coffee to the teachers and students. Recently, we have started to branch out and participate in other events. We have, we have participated in our school's annual open day, the Christian, College, the Christian Schools Teacher Conference at Mueller College, the Arts Night, and the Activate Hope Youth Fest. We launched Bean Their Coffee early February 2019 and soon realised that this century there is a demand for new technology and simplicity. Therefore, we decided to create a Google form as a tool in order to allow teachers to pre-order a warm beverage and it's delivered straight to their front door. The convenience for teachers has increased as they can place an online order and it's delivered straight to their door. We love to perfect our coffee for our customers as we love to see a smile on their face when they receive their coffee. And we hope to make their day just a little bit better by providing amazing coffee. We have been running efficiently for four to five months and we are extremely keen to branch out to more functions and see how far our business can go. Due to the, due to the demand for a more appealing logo, we have transformed our new image with a new logo and van wrap, which has completely transformed the look of our business. I have had the idea of an environmentally friendly program, it's called Coffee Trees. The DeLorean van labels themselves as environmentally friendly, so I wanted to try and push this to the next level. Coffee Trees is an idea that after every 
50 coffees is sold, I plant a new tree somewhere around the school. As a reminder that giving back to the environment is always good. I have done some research and come to the realisation that coffee grounds are great for growing plants in. This way we aren't wasting the leftover coffee grounds that are used to make coffee and we are making a positive impact on our school. As well as labelling our business as environmentally friendly, we almost exclusively use locally sourced products in order to support the business around us. Due to the increase in pollution, we need to give back to our environment so we are able to continue making coffee for our amazing customers. As well as supporting local brands, we have another thing that makes us different. At the end of the year, we've decided to donate 40% of the profits we make to Mary Cross Scenic Reserve in Mullaney. Um, this service is dedicated to conserving and enhancing the national habitat, natural habitat of the Sunshine Coast, as well as providing a valued community resource for education, research, recreation and enjoyment. This is something we as a team value very much. By donating money to this rainforest conservation project, we're hopefully doing as much as we can to help the environment we live in. Our goal is to sell 2,000 copies by the end of this year, and we currently are well on our way. We have currently sold 760 copies as of Wednesday last week. At the start of this year, we were in the red for financial figures due to maintenance and bar barista course that was required. However, by week seven of term two, our profits have turned into green. We are the third group in the DeLorean project to contain the DeLorean coffee van. However, we have been the fastest group able to turn over a profit. With all of that being said, our business is doing very well. However, there are many things that could improve on to bring more joy to our customers. With using milk quite regularly, it is very easy to cost contaminate and the different types of milk used in different jugs if we don't wash them well enough. With this being said, we would like your help to contribute to the funds of the milk jug and frappe machine. One item that could benefit our business is the milk jug cleaner. They normally range from $300 to $400. Having this item would increase our productivity and uh, we wouldn't have to clean it by ourselves, which slows us down. It would also ensure we, not, we are not cross-contaminating the different types of, mi of milk as someone may be allergic to lactose or even soybeans. Another item that could improve our business is a frappe machine. They normally range from $100 to $150. At this moment in time, we only make hot drinks. If we were to start making ice drinks, we could be engaging more customers, therefore having a larger profit. From being their coffee team, we are also grateful for this opportunity that this pitch has given us, and we would never have this experience if it wasn't for you. So we would like to say a huge thank you. We look forward to working with you, building our business success in the future. Give, give us, us a, a shot, shot and, we'll and we'll give you one. Wow. Well done. Thank you. Um, okay, so the, the DeLorean coffee van, how, how does that operate? Because I've never seen you guys before. So if you were to continue growing your business, does that, how long can you use this particular coffee van for? So we would be using this coffee van until the end of this year, but then it gets passed over every year and we want to make it as easy as like it can be for the next like year coming up because we know how hard it was for us. We don't, we want to like not leave any debt and we want to have as much opportunity for, uh, opportunity for them as they can have. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'd only be using it for the next six months or so. Okay. So the next group that take it on, they would start their own business around the coffee van. Yeah. They've got to do the, all their own like, marketing and everything. They've got okay. to swap the name out. Just the same yeah. concept of coffee. They just get the coffee van. Yeah. yeah. So where does that leave your business? Well, I think that we've gained a lot of experience. It's low. We know we won't have our own business. We have um, experience in coffee, customer service, mm -hmm. which really helps us with our future careers yeah. if mm -hmm. we want that. So it's not as per se having a business. It it'll just help us in our future. Yeah. And yeah, agreed. Uh, with Sam, he's future goals, yeah. as far as yeah. I'm aware. 
he wants to be a barista and own his own company. Yeah. So therefore he can gain community, like, what, sorry? Yeah, yeah the experience um, now. Yeah, and yeah. have people to talk to in the future. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah like, I found the business side of it is very, like, it's very interesting, like, for my future in particular, just because yeah. it'll, like, it'll come in handy yeah. for if I ever want to do something in hospitality, well, I do want to, but, like, in coffee. Yeah. Excellent. And your coffee's good, and we were, uh, we were just talking about before, we were disappointed that you weren't open. Yeah. <laughs> we're sorry, we're yeah, trying to perfect right. our pitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, areas that you feel that you've improved from last year, from the business last year? Well, I think definitely I'll like coffee skills have gotten better, like I think we're much more efficient and quick now, we know what we're doing, sort of, um, like our logo has improved ten times more, like, as you would know, but, but yeah, I think just, yeah, our experience and knowledge that has come from running it, I think. So the 2000s, sorry. As for, say, you said from last year's, what From it's, last year, so yeah. how many, how many um, uh, coffees did they sell last year? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So last year they, I think, only started making profit for term three at the end of term three. Yeah. And yeah, the end. we have gained a lot more um, events and we have probably yeah. boosted a lot more than yeah. last year's has been, per se. We've, yeah. we've definitely put ourselves sort of out there in the wider community than the last group and that was one of our goals at the start of the year so we're well on the way for that. So the 2,000 coffees, how was that uh, target set for the year? Well we just looked at sort of the events we were doing and like what sort of, um, how many people were coming to those events and I think if we're picking up a lot of events and we're doing coffee here on a Wednesday we will definitely reach that target because when we go to the um, events, it's not just a few teachers here and there. It's it's a fair few people. Yes, yeah. Like at open day, we were crazy busy. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so on your sorry on your on your Google um, pre order or whatever, maybe we were talking about that when I was here. How, how successful has that been, and what percentage of your sales to the teachers are through the pre? Um, I'd say like majority of the teachers um, order on that. Um, just because I think it's just way more like simple like they can just in the morning while they're doing roll call they can just put oh yeah I'd like a cappuccino at lunchtime and they just it just comes to them it's much more simple than having to get up and come to us and, and how do they pay for it? Um, generally we'll take a payment method around so they write on cash or card and we'd either take it around or they can pay there's a, PayPal. Yeah, so we have a portable PayPal machine and we take it with the Wi-Fi and deliver it to the teachers and they just tap their card or insert cool. it and pay for it by an iPad and per portable PayPal. Wow, really impressed. What's going to be your legacy? I think this year we have, I want the next group to outdo us. I know that's going to sound very, yeah, like, I love you guys, but I want the next year to outdo us. So it keeps getting better and better every year. And I, like, for me, I want to leave the coffee van as good as it'll get so they can do that. And um, I just think, yeah, I'll, no, we have pretty good customer service. Yeah. And we're always, like, putting in our efforts. So I'm hoping that they'll follow in our footsteps yeah. and do that sort of thing. Are there things that you can leave behind for them at all? Uh, well, they can, like we can leave the coffee machine and the best nick we can. And can you leave them uh, like a written process for how to do things the best way? Well, we, Are you yeah, to do that? That would be an I interesting think. idea. Yeah. Next year, in the agreement, we've decided to have a meeting with the future team and hand it over to them so and say what's previously happened. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And yeah. I would always like them to be able to come to me and ask, hey, Kiana, yeah. what did you do when this happened? What did you do when that happened? And I think yeah, right. even with the new uh, appliances we want, that's going to help them out so much more. Like if we would have had that by now, we would, you know, so I think if they, I just want to give them the best opportunity yeah. that they can. So what is your, what profit do you think you'll end up with for the year? 
what's your forecast? How much have we made this year? Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's like I think around 2,000 once we take si away. I think it's 2,600 or what or something. Like once we take away, obviously, the cost costs. of the milk. Yeah, yeah. so that's so what nice. you've made that's already. What, yeah. yeah, well, we've made more than that, but we have to take away the costs of all the yeah. Yeah, maintenance and everything. Okay. So. so then what do you think you might do for the rest of the year, roughly? Ooh. Well, there's six months left. I say we probably make about how much we've made for the first half, which was how much without taking your four thousand four thousand dollars. I reckon around. So we'll probably make another four thousand. Wow! And then forty percent of that you're going to donate. Yes. Yeah. So sixty percent will be left. Yep. Uh, That's for you to do whatever you. Yeah. Ten percent Matt goes into the maintenance for next year's okay. coffee. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Yeah. So fifty percent essentially, and then we get the other half. Well, just to be a bit uh, cheeky, why ask us for that money for the equipment when you've got that profit? And if you were to, I mean, it's only a very small percentage of your profit, give that as a parting gift to next year's team. Well, it's just because then more of the profit can go into the Mary Cross Can Association. Cross, yeah. 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 And I just think that. Uh, we are constantly taking expenses out for things like, yeah, the van and this and that. And, you know, our coffee machine can be a bit temperamental sometimes. And we have to, like, coffee beans are quite expensive. And, yeah, yeah so I just think the more we have to donate and, like, if the van ends up, something happens to it, we have that money to put over there sort of thing. So that's, yeah. Because yeah. one thing that I've learned over the years is that um, quite often you'll leave a job or a business and you go and do something new mm -hmm. and you, you're wondering what you've left behind and how that's going to, what's going to look like. Yeah. yeah. And when you come back by chance and run into something three years later and it's growing and it's bigger, you actually get a really big sense of satisfaction out of that. So I asked you what your legacy was going to be, um, like you've got, you've created a really great impact from the environment and things that you're doing. I'd challenge you to think about well, how could you set up next year's team to like some crazy goal, double the impact yeah. that you've had? And sometimes it is about giving away more to achieve that. And that'll be a decision for you guys to decide on around how do you balance that sense of satisfaction out with the profit part? That's it's up to you. Um, just a free, free thought I'll share with you. Well done. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Love the logo. Oh, thank you. Did you guys do it yourself? Sam. Yeah. Yep. You did it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, just on Illustrator. Nice job. <laughs> thank nice you. Nice job. Thank you. I think what's, um, what stands out the most is the fact that you've all learned such a lot and that you're identifying problems now and trying to rectify those for the next group of students that are going to yeah, come through. That's, yeah, what I was going to say. With yeah. The legacy is let them know what problems we have so they can yeah. overcome it. Yeah, but maybe a process manual would be a really <laughs> good thing to leave as well. Yeah. Because, you know, how how far further ahead would you have got if somebody left you a process manual? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that would be a nice thing to do to leave behind a, a road map and yeah. set, you're going to set a high bed, benchmark anyway, but help, help your, um, you know, the, those that are going to follow you, maybe with a little road map. Yeah, I think we spent so much of our time in the beginning trying to figure out what we were supposed to be yeah. doing and I, yeah, again, for the next year, it'd be good if they could just get straight into it because then... Yeah, hopefully they outdo us because I want to see the coffee van grow and our schools well, will. Well, if you leave a legacy yeah. behind to let them be on rung six on yeah. the ladder and not have to start on rung one. Yeah. yeah. Plus a little love note at the back of the manual that says, FYI, we did this, we achieved <laughs> yeah. so many trees, this much donation. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> keep that. <laughs> yeah. And part of it, ensure you pay it forward as well, let them know that, you know. Mm -hmm. That'd be a great legacy. Yeah, that'd be great. Well job. done, everybody. Thank Delorean you. Cash, you guys need to be able to give cash up as well. <laughs> What'd you say your profit's going to be? Uh, we're <laughs> aiming for 8,000. Oh, not profits, 4,000 profits, 8,000. So 
I'm going to give you 40 DeLorean dollars. If this had been truly your own business and you were taking on further, I would have bought the coffee, the, the milk jug cleaners for you. I would have given yeah. you that money. But because it's not, and you're handing it on to another set of students, and you're going to probably make $2,000 profit, 40 of which, 40% you'll give to Mary Cancross. Yeah. 10% back to maintenance. That leaves 50%. Where does that go? We, we don't actually know that that's the case, to be okay. honest. We've never had a coffee team want to move, to move forward with it and continue it. Yeah. So, okay. um, Would it be an option if we were... So if we had a coffee team, if we had a coffee team that was super committed and really wanted to take it on... Good at what they do. Yeah, guys, um, shock it <laughs> um, Yeah, we would be happy to consider that that becomes There's 40 the... DeLorean dollars. If that's the case, I will buy you the milk jug cleaner. If you, if, but I won't. If you're going, if you're going to pass it on to somebody else, yeah. Then I think that that can come out of the profits. Yes. Yeah. Just Ryan's sake, it's a bit, a bit of a cheeky ass. <laughs> <laughs> We're all pretty good at numbers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Move it forward, and it's whatever it is. A hundred. What did you say it was? A hundred twenty. Oh, no, that's three hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And and in seeing them do it. it was the thing that was, you were cleaning the milk jug, I think, with that yeah. or whatever. It did take a lot of time, so some of us had to wait a little bit. Yeah. But I think you guys, while the concept was basically there for you, you put in a lot of elbow grease, and a lot of time, and a lot of effort outside of school or whatever, and I think that that's worth a lot. And you, you know, I think you would have learned a lot about working, working. Yes? Yeah. So you got 40, you got yeah, 40, 40 for me as well, Max. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well done, guys. Well go camping each year. Campers face many challenges. One of those we know is a quick and reliable light source. And another key is another key challenge is preparing said lighting and a host of other equipment such as fridges, tools, and all important screens. We have a series of con concept products that aim to create an integrated solar solution for an easy, reliable light source that is quick to set up in the night and while being practical to an entire solar solution built into a custom roof rack system. The foldable side that faces the ground that is equipped with a light bar that can be used to shine down next to your car. One example of the light could be used for a as simple as cooking dinner under the under it or trying to find a path for your car. This could be useful when a car has a flat tire at night. The light will provide a bright light along the side of the vehicle for a safe, visible working environment. We have an we have an integrated solar solution that is a solar panel side that is mounted underneath the roof rack. Um, the problem we saw with solar panels on roof racks is that people could put their gear on the roof rack, but they can slide out their solar panel. So we mount, we mount, um, yeah. So we mount um, a solar panel underneath the roof rack that will slide out of the vehicle when it is stationary, so that the solar panel can charge it, charge from the sunlight while camping gear is on the roof rack at the same time. This solar panel can be used to power all camping and four drive accessories that the everyday camper may need when camping, such as fridges, other lights, power tools, electrical systems, and other accessories. Our plan is to make a small scale prototype that is fully functional that we can use to see what we need to improve on and the flaws that may occur in the prototype. So far in this industry, we have yet to see a company that manufactures roof rack accessories. So we thought of a new product while solving a camping problem. If you have gone camping before, you would know that lighting is essential at night. There is a problem that most campers have, and that is lighting takes up a while to set up. Although there are spotlight and torches, um, we will provide a light source that spreads the whole side of the car, and it's quick and easy. With an accessory like a solar panel, it solves oh, the... Guys, we've got no visuals. Oh. You need to turn the been none throughout your presentation.
items cost us. It's there now, the problem yeah. I saw it, so. I don't know how to make that just here and here. Isn't there a switch under the front or the right hand side yeah. that somebody's... Oh, there we go, well done. With an accessory like a solar panel, it solves the electricity problem, especially when it's so easy to access. If you've been camping before, you know that electricity can be used for many things such as such as a light, electricity, uh, electric stoves, and other things that may use may be used when camping. Have you got any pictures on here? Do you want to go back over? Yeah, just go slides. back over the slides. Oh, there's only two. There's we got a picture on here. It's only like a rough drawing we did. So describe it for me, in, in visually, what's it look like? It's just like a normal size roof rack, and then on the sides, you know how roof rack has sides so you can get in. They'll fold down, lights underneath them to shine next to your car. Yeah. And I'll have a solar panel slide up with me that can slide out. Okay. Is it um, energised just from the solar panel or? Uh, it'll probably be connected to the car battery as well. How large of a market do you think it is? Um, pretty large. Well, we searched up facts and 12 million people go camping each year in Australia. Right? Can your panel be retrofitted to any vehicle? Uh, probably not. Probably have to be custom. You'd have to make a whole unit. A whole? A whole unit. So Which is part of the rack, an integral part of the rack? Is yeah. it part of the racking system? Or? Yeah, it'd have to be part of the actual roof rack itself. Okay. 